Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Today I've got Richard Hort Hortness. Is that right? Yeah, you got it. Perfect. Um, he's actually a two-time Olympian, so I'm pretty excited to have him on board. Yeah. So please, tell us about yourself. So, um, story is kind of simple, but then it gets longer. Um, so I'm a two-time Olympian uh, in the sport of swimming. I, My favorite sport. Okay. Um, I went to the Olympics in Beijing okay. and London. And I competed in two different races, one with a relay in London and one with uh, an individual race, but a whole bunch of training for a very short amount of time. So 20 seconds of face in the water, going as hard as I can for when I was racing in Beijing. And in London, it was two lengths of the pool with four other guys as fast as we could. Cool. Yeah. So what was your favorite country then? My favorite country to compete against yes. or to go to or... Both. Um, I don't know. Competing against Australia is always fun because they're actually like really nice guys and they all swim really, really well. Um, but once you're done racing, it's very like friendly. Okay. Um, whereas there's a lot of, of bravado and attitude that stays with other countries, um, like the Americans and, um, then there's any language barrier. So, you know, you can't really make a lot of friends with uh, the Brazilians, because mm -hmm. I don't speak Portuguese. Yeah, that would be a little bit of a tough one. It's a little bit harder. Just tougher. Yeah. Okay. And then, so what was your favorite country you actually uh, competed in? Competing, I think, I mean, I sp we spent a lot of time staging in Singapore, and I really wish that I got <laughs> more time to to go and, and spend time traveling there. But um, I think anywhere in Asia is just a lot of fun. It's, it's different, um, but you still get a bigger sense of like the world because we spend a lot of time in our own little bubbles here. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So how long do you have to train for? Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of sport dependent, but for me, training was always um, seven practices a week. Um, and no, seven to nine practices a week. Um, so some days you have two, um, but that doesn't include recovery time. It doesn't include time, you know, eating properly. It doesn't spend or include time where you're actually spending like time sleeping. Um, cause all of that stuff is built into it and it's all very, very important. Okay. Yeah. So what is your favorite lap or style of swimming? Oh, well, I'm a freestyler. So just face in the water, normal front crawl kind of swimming. Okay. Um, you can just go forever. Um, and um, it's also the easiest. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, you can, you can breathe, um, with your face out of the water while you're swimming backstroke, but front crawl is just, I mean, it's smooth, it's rhythmic and it's, it's good to go. Cool. Yeah. Um, so do you use any supplements or anything that actually helps with your regime? So my supplement story is funny because as an athlete, we were given, um, whatever was sponsored by the national training center. Okay. And that's it. Um, and so it was free. You could ask for as many bottles as you want. So um, there's a nice little white bottle with a rainbow label on it out there. And, and that's what we got. And I didn't believe in supplements at all. So my wife is a three-time um, Olympic rower. And she was taking supplements from a really well-rated company. Um, she believed in them. She's like, I'm going to take these things forever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, they're useless. And so I started taking like six at a time to prove to her that, you know, supplements didn't matter. Um, and then only after I finished competing, did I find USANA. And, um, it's really funny because it turned into, um, something that within a month, my body is like, hungrier at meal times and I'm like why what like nothing has changed in my life besides adding in these vitamins mm -hmm. and the only thing I can think of is my body's like telling me hey it's time for those things get that stuff in me and I would see it at breakfast and at dinner that like if I didn't have it I still felt hungry after dinner and I still felt like something was missing um and that really turned into um to me going okay this is something that I want to have pretty much for the rest of my life and you know like my wife was right <laughs> yeah so have you so you have not had any other supplements other than usana uh just usana and that that one that we were taking um through the national sports centers okay and what was the difference did you find between the two um well i mean between them right like you're you're still taking 
a pill or a vitamin pill or whatever you want to call it, right? But um, you're still taking something and that, that doesn't change. The, the thing that I think is different is all of the knowing that you get from um, the company, right? So the fact that um, it's pharmaceutical grade. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's made to the same level of quality and reassurance and all of the things, um, random testing on the shelf or any bottle within the facility can be pulled off the shelf and tested to make sure it's pure. It has to be absorbable into your body. Um, just those two things by themselves, right? Growing and, and building in this business, I started to talk to other people, x-ray technologists and they're like, yeah, we see pills that aren't digested in people's bodies all the time, mm -hmm. which is so weird. Like you're taking something, but you expect it to be absorbed and put into your body. And I mean, my pee was changing color, so I assumed everything was going well, but, um, that was before. And like, now I know that those pills don't even dissolve. So there's maybe the outer coatings coming off, but the real stuff that you want to get in you isn't always getting into you. Um, but with pharmaceutical grade products, they have to be testable in your bloodstream within 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So you know that whatever you're taking is going in. And if I'm not mistaken, there was also um, an athlete's guarantee with so, USANA. So yeah, so with USANA, right? Like I wasn't, um, I wasn't taking USANA, even though three of our national teams are sponsored by USANA, which is super ironic. Um, but yeah, so for those athletes that are sponsored, there's a guarantee to match the athlete's income for up to two years, up to a million dollars. Wow. That's so huge. It's huge. It, it doesn't, it doesn't exist anywhere else that I know. Um, I have lots of friends that have product, uh, sponsorships and whatever, but they don't have that same backing that, Hey, you know, if it's actually our fault and something goes wrong, um, we'll still support you financially um, through the hard times because mm -hmm. effectively your career is over, right? And so they're guaranteeing that if something does go wrong, your career is going to last. That's pretty cool for, you know, a company to stand by their products. It's amazing. That's huge. Yeah. So how long have you been with USANA? So I'm in going into my fifth year of taking products and um, being an associate with USANA. Um, and it's been like a really fun journey. Um, learned a lot and things that I wish I knew when I was an athlete. And that's the part that's like semi frustrating. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure that it, you know, if I knew these things before that I would be a faster swimmer or a better swimmer, but I probably would have recovered faster. I probably would have um, seen more gains in certain areas. Um, the training is still the training. I wasn't going to change that, but definitely if my cells had all of what they needed, um, and I was eating better, like I'm eating better now than I was as an athlete. And it's not because I have more money. It's because I'm smarter because of the, the things that I've learned while working. Here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are some of your favorite, um, vitamins? Yeah. So, I mean, daily regimen, I think for me and for everybody <laughs> should be the essentials, which is a multivitamin and a multimineral. Um, so you have those two just to make sure that every day you're getting everything you need, right? We have recommended daily intakes, but those are actually like the welfare level of cellular health. Okay. Um, so what our, like our, our multivitamin multimineral do is they make sure that like, okay, I didn't eat as well today, but I know for sure that I'm getting everything that I need. Um, and so that in the nutrition aspect of things is great. After that, it becomes um, other things that you want to add in. Fish oil is huge. I mean, there's so many different things that, like it reduces cortisol, which is a stress hormone. It helps keep you balanced there. It's good for your skin and joints. Um, I have like low level eczema that comes out every once in a while on my hands. And um, like I can't even wear my wedding ring today because my, my fingers are flaring up. But helping have um, things like fish oil help mm -hmm. reduce that. And if I do start to flare up, I'll just take a couple extra a day and it usually settles down quickly. Um, it also helps with, um, with anything in your body that needs those, those nice omega three oils. Um, and that like the fish oils 
an amazing product for just how it's made. They make sure it doesn't go rancid because people have those fishy burps. Yeah. Um, that doesn't happen. One, because it's made in a nitrogen environment, so it can oxidize. And two, they add in, even if you did get some kind of burp, um, they add in some lemon oil, and so it tastes nice. Right? Like, the company goes and goes, oh, okay, maybe we'll just, like, add, add this a little, little extra of, thing. Yes, and they also apparently have it for the juniors as well. Yeah, so um, my son takes the Biomega Junior, which is, like, a little squeezy pack of, like, orange creamsicle or orange pineapple something. Okay. Um, and, I mean, he likes it, and if, you know, a three-year-old is going to have a vitamin, they might as well enjoy, like, you know, the taste of it, too. Um, and then vitamin D. I mean, vitamin D is in so many different body processes mm -hmm. that it's ridiculous um, at how fast it depletes. Um, we had a friend who, um, his mom got cancer and they tested her and she had zero vitamin D in her because it was all used up. Um, and it's like I, we have another friend who's a, a naturopath and she wrote a an article talking about all the different pathways and all the things that vitamin D does mm -hmm. in our bodies um, and without it it just it, yeah you're you're defective with like within those pathways well here in Vancouver especially with the rain we well, don't get a lot of the vit natural vitamin D well and there's that but there's also when it is sunny we go outside what do we put on our, our skin or sunscreen. Sunscreen. So that stops your body from making the 90% of the vitamin D anyways. Mm -hmm. So even if you're going outside in the summer, you're still not going to get necessarily all the vitamin D, right? And the only way to know these things for sure is by doing blood tests. But um, there's companies that are, that are out there that did all kinds of testing and consistently they saw that vitamin D is low. And I, I've only ever met one or two people that use a company called Inside Tracker to like go and do blood tests for their sport mm -hmm. life. And there's they're the only two that I've ever heard that are like, yeah, no, vitamin D is actually fine for me. It's crazy. So what would you say um, an average person needs in terms of vitamin D? Well, 2000 IUs is what we do. Um, and I think that's what it's recommended on the bottle. Um, but I know that um, our friend who's that naturopath will say um, when as soon as she starts to feel like she's getting sick, she'll bump it to 20,000. I use vitamin D. So, I mean, that's a lot. But when you look at, um, when you look at like your body's demand based off of the activities that you're doing, um, we have friends that are triathletes that that's kind of their average mm -hmm. is 20. I mean, it only starts to get toxic, I think, at the numbers of 50,000 a day um, because vitamin D is one of those five vitamins that you just don't want to overdo. But um, nobody's going to be taking that many a day. Yeah, yeah that'd be a lot of vitamin It'd D. It'd be a lot. A I lot. mean, it's, it's, it's a ton. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what are your favorite meals that you work with every day? Oh man, so like I said, now food is, is a, a whole different ballgame from when I was training. But um, in terms of, of food, like it's, it's really about fueling the, the activity that you're doing. And so when you are in peak training or in, in there as an athlete, you're actually just trying to fuel to the same level of calories that you're burning. Okay. And I mean, right now with where I'm at, I actually still burn roughly 3,000 calories a day, right? The average daily diet is theoretically 2,000 calories a day. So even with like my height, I'm six foot three, I'm 190 pounds. Um, and with the amount of moving that I do, um, I'm about 3,000 calories a day. So to fuel that, right, I have to make sure I'm eating, snacking um, consistently and now, right, if I was going to go back and be, be an athlete again, um, I would definitely be incorporating a lot more vegetables into my diet, not relying so much on um, simple carbs like pastas, mm -hmm. going into more rice, going into more um, sweet potatoes, getting those kinds of things into my life that we do now, but I just like never thought about. I was just about putting any kind of calorie into my body. So I guess with um, being with USANA, you get training as well. And also while you're an athlete, you get that training. Yeah, so I mean, as an athlete, you have to kind of search it out a little bit more. 
um, unless you're at a national training center and then there's a, a dietitian that will be there like for you whenever you need it. Okay. Um, but I never trained in a national training center. So for me, um, I had to pick things up. I didn't make the national team in 2011. That's when I actually accessed a nutritionist for the first time. And she got me onto like a weight reduction plan that involved like eating bowl oatmeal in the morning, then a training recovery drink, um, and then coming home and having no, e uh, no bread, but a couple of eggs with an avocado. Um, and then I could have lunch with a, a wrap or whatever, but then no more carbs after lunch. Mm -hmm. So dinner was the biggest salad you've ever seen with some protein. And that was my whole meal. Um, and I had to do that for basically the last year leading up to, to the Olympics. And it, it made a huge difference. Um, I mean, my body uh, fat percentage dropped way down. Um, I gained five pounds of muscle back on top of what I lost. Um, and it made a huge difference. And I mean, now we don't actually eat too far off of that. Okay. We're still eating at home, um, still very healthy, um, all eat like this morning I ate a bowl of oatmeal, I had an apple and a carrot or, or two carrots at school. Um, I dropped the egg that I was eating every day just because I felt like I didn't need it anymore. Um, a, a regular good healthy lunch. Today, because I was short on time just with scheduling and whatever, I went and I actually had a shake. So we have like a whole bunch of different shake options. Um, now different kinds of proteins that you can put in, plant ones, whey ones. Um, soy uh, proteins, but then with a whole bunch of different flavor options. Um, but today was just a Nutrimeal shake, which it's just like so easy, right? It's three scoops, some milk, a little bit of water. If it's in the morning, I just put coffee in instead of the water. Mm -hmm. And then I have a coffee shake, um, which is co coffee and chocolate. <laughs> like, how can that be bad, right? That's like, like that, that's the best combination. Be. Yeah. Can you actually elaborate a little bit more on the, the foods that Isona has? So yeah, I mean, the food line's grown in the last little bit, and I know we're still expanding it. Um, but I mean, for there's there's so many different combinations of things that you can do. But there's bars and shakes, um, and the shakes is really where I, I sit with the most. Like my cupboard has it, um, but there's different flavor optimizers, and I think that's what is the biggest difference separator. So you have a, a like super lightly vanilla base of all of the different flavors mm -hmm. or all of the different pro proteins. So again, it's a soy protein, a whey protein, or a, a totally like allergen free, a plant based protein with like three different kinds of like it's pea and potato and something else proteins. Um, and so then you can take those proteins and you can like mix them into baking if you want to you can mix them into anything there's a fiber add-on option mm -hmm. um, but then the flavors come in and they've gone and they I think instead of just your regular like okay a vanilla shake a chocolate shake or a strawberry shake right they have these like dyna dynamic kind of like orange creamsicle and they have a chai tea one and they have like uh, a few different chocolate fudges or mm -hmm. something like that and it um, it makes it so that you can have something you can even have it warm in some cases based off of the flavor um, and it it changes it so you're not just eating you know a bar which are also delicious um, and a shake but actually you're... the bars we're getting new set of bars in January yeah that's and, pretty exciting and revamping the the old berry nutty bar and I, yeah. I think that that's um, well, I'm actually really excited for that because those like you're looking at this food line and I have friends that want to lose weight, but, um, have a hard time not like not preparing their lunches. So they're always going out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, so how about this? It's $15 when you go out, it's $3 for one shake. This is clean protein. It's got the same amount of sugar as an apple. Right, it's gonna be absorbed in your body. Um, it's easy, and you don't have to do anything. You don't have to leave. So not only can you have your shake, it's a whole meal replacement, but you can also take it on a walk. Mm -hmm. So your lunch hour that it was forty minutes, but thirty of it is driving, 
10 of it is shoving food into your face, you now have 40 minutes where you can walk and actually like listen to the birds or whatever you want to do. Um, and and it it's just makes it easy. They are honestly a godsend. They're so easy, um, especially like, you know, being on the go. I love it. Yeah. And they come in individual packets where it's um, you just basically open Put your water in and you're good to go. Yeah. It's so easy. Yeah. So what's your favorite flavor? I'm a Nutrimeal guy. So just chocolate. Um, I mean, usually it's in the morning, but I mean, anytime I can add chocolate to my life, yeah. I'm a happier person, right? There's two things that fuel me. It's chocolate and coffee. And I don't so, feel so bad now. <laughs> yeah, no, you're fine. Like, And especially like I have three kids, yeah. right? I have twins that are one and a half. I have a three and a half year old. Wow. And so, especially when the babies came out like two Februarys ago, I pretty much mainline coffee. I have a coffee maker in my classroom when I'm teaching, and it was always like there's a pot or half a pot going on in the in the morning, and usually that was gone by the time lunch came around, mm -hmm. and then I'd have to hit it again um, at about three o'clock when I was going to be driving home, so that I had some kind of alertness to take, help take care of babies. So, would you be able to? exchange the coffee for a rev three so yeah i mean like gratuitous product placement on the t-shirt but um i don't so we drive often at night especially in the summers um after work uh, for my wife we'll drive to penticton because okay. we have a place that we go up there i won't make that drive especially at night without taking a rev three and there's like this this is a a clean energy drink which is super ironic when you think about it um but all the energy drinks out there, right? They're so full of other add-ons and little things that are sneaky chemicals that you don't know exactly what they're doing or they say, oh, here's this amino acid that, you know, doesn't act, it's an amino acid. It helps build protein. It doesn't really do much in your energy mm -hmm. pathways. Um, but they're throwing it in there and claiming it's gonna give you a big boost. Um, and this is like non-chemically derived uh, like not in a test tube. They're not making caffeine or a stimulant in a test tube. They're actually extracting caffeine from three different kinds of tea. Then they're adding in, if you're getting the shake, uh, the little like packets that you pour into a bottle of water, it's got rhodiola in it, which is actually a de-stressor. So okay. if you're stressed out and you're going to a naturopath, they're going to give you rhodiola to calm you down. And we're putting that in our energy drink, which is like an oxymoron, right? Yeah. Because you want to be up but we're giving you something that'll help relax you. So um, that, and then again, like a low amount of sugar. And really what the energy drinks are is they're the vitamins and minerals that your body needs, a little bit of sugar to make energy. So it acts at like the caffeine's gonna give you a little bit of alertness, but the rest of it that's in there is actually like what your body would need to make more energy. So it's fuel for your cells to go and make the energy process happen. And it's also got a pomegranate taste to it. So there's that one too. So the cans are the pomegranate ones. Those are really nice. Um, but yeah, I like the iced tea. It, it reminds me of like taking like extra scoops of iced tea out as a kid from like the good host container and like, you know, when I'm not supposed to have that much. <laughs> good old childhood memories. <laughs> Um, so what are some tips that you would give to people who are just starting to, um, look out for their health? Yeah. So I do a lot of work with people, um, on their health as like part of the USANA or my USANA journey, right? It's starting educating myself more and then like sharing that information out. And the biggest thing is one day at a time, right? You were doing a couple things. One you may be trying to undo a whole lifetime's worth of bad habits. Mm -hmm. It takes minimum consistent effort of 21 days to start to make a new habit. And that's just to start, not to solidify, but to start to make a new habit. Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to, um, to make these changes, you don't want to like beat yourself up if on Tuesday and it's you know day two of what you're trying to do, you're like, ah, oh, I need a cheeseburger. Great, go eat a cheeseburger, right? Um, but you don't have to like hate yourself for it. 
um, you can come back to that the next day and realize like, okay, well, why did I want that cheeseburger? Well, it's because I didn't eat enough of this earlier mm -hmm. or I didn't have that snack that I was supposed to. So I started getting hunger pangs and it was way easier to go and just stop, drive through to drive through. Um, and that's like a big one, right? Is to not hate yourself. But two is just take the time to understand why you're doing it. Um, find somebody to do it with. Right, an accountability partner is way better than any like solo attempt mm -hmm. because one, if you're trying to like make that change and you're struggling, you can check in with your partner. Two, I know that tomorrow morning when I go for my run, if my buddy isn't gonna meet me at eight at six o'clock, eh, it's a little bit easier to not get out of bed. Yeah. Right. Um. So, yeah, like finding somebody to do it with and to take it one day at a time and understand that it's a process. It's a journey. You're trying to change your life in a way that's better for you. Um, and yeah, really just starting with that. Those are excellent tips. And right now, I don't know if you know that I'm actually running the 28 day transform your life. Yeah. So that's why I brought you actually yeah. into this whole conversation. So then we can get awareness and create more awareness for others out there and who are also starting that journey. Totally. And it, it, like you said, it is definitely a journey that you do want to embrace and then embark on. Yeah. And it's got to come from the heart. Yeah. And I mean, remember, you know, remind yourself why you're doing it. Um, and there's going to be so many different reasons, right? Some of them are intrinsic. Like you just, you look in the mirror and you're like, okay, this is not the, what I want to be, mm -hmm. right? And it's not, it's never, it should never be, this is what I want to look like. Because that's bullshit, mm -hmm. right? Like, it's just not right. Uh, your health is not measured by the outward appearance. Your health is measured by, like, what's happening inside your body. And so, starting with that, um, you just, I kind of lost my train of thought, but, like, you just need to really like do it for for yourself or for somebody else and do it like remind yourself why you're doing it that's mm -hmm. where i was going with this like remind yourself that you know maybe you want to live and be healthy after you retire and so you can go and travel because so many people work so hard drive themselves so hard into the ground and then can't do anything with it after right they've got money finally Right? They've got a house, they can actually go travel, their kids are set, but guess what? They've got 16 different medications that they're on, they can't walk more than 15 feet without getting winded. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know anybody that wants that to be their future. I know, I definitely don't. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of people that are living that way and I just don't, I feel sorry for them. Yeah. And that's something I don't want to do and that's probably why... That's one of my biggest factors for why I started the 28 day transform Yeah, to take my health back. Well, I mean the, what I said to my first time stepping on stage, it was right after my son Kieran was born and I was like, I want to be able to pick him up now, but I also want to be able to pick him up when he's 20, mm -hmm. right? I want to be in the right shape physically, um, to be able to do that because yeah, it just, it's a legacy thing that way, right? You want to be setting the, if you have young kids, you want to be setting the right example for them. Um, and that goes with like taking care of your body, right? Exercising, going for walks, lifting weights, or like going into the garage and showing mm -hmm. them what muscles move with different exercises. And um, that way they know and they're not going to be like sitting on the couch all the time. It's, it's, that's my legacy, right? That's my... And that's a huge legacy. Yeah. So do you have any tips that you can, or any quick exercises that our folks at home can do while they're sitting at home? Well, I mean, definitely, like, if you want to start running, the, the easiest way to do it is put on your shoes, right? To start with that. Um, and then leave your house. And then once you're out of your house, walk. Yeah. Right? And... The, the general, like, if you go to uh, one of the shoe stores and they start a, a run program, if you've never run before, they're going to make you walk and run, right? So run for a minute. It's going to be the worst minute of your life. 
but run for a minute and then walk for two minutes and then run for a minute and walk for two minutes, right? Until you feel like, okay, this minute isn't so bad and then bring it down to one and one. And before you know it, right, if you leave the house for 30 minutes mm -hmm. and you're walking and running, you're gonna cover four kilometers. And then you'd be like, oh, that race that I was like, somebody told me I should sign up for was a 5K race. And I'm doing almost that in, you know, 40 minutes. Well, why not just see if I can run that thing and build up to that? Um, exercises, I mean, exercises is totally dependent on who you are, but I mean, even just simple stretching and flexibility, starting there. Um, there's so many things online that are, you know, yoga based. Mm -hmm. um, and you can even just by stretching build up a sweat um, just through general movement, right? And if you're not starting there and you want, you are going to try and um, build up, um, there's there's body weight exercises um, that you can do that you don't have to leave your kitchen. Um, you can do squats holding onto the counter with one leg or two legs. Um, you can do push-ups and all the different modifications of mm -hmm. them. Um, and really like building in um, a small routine that you can stick to you know every two days going down into the basement putting on your shoes jump rope right um anything good old skipping rope, good old skipping rope right <laughs> and that actually has other effects that are better for your body it'll help you poop better mm -hmm. right because everything moves around on the inside when you skip um and it helps like blood in your lymph system. It, it's, it's really a funny kind of thing that something so simple actually has other benefits. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, really any kind of movement that way, um, just getting your body used to it. And even if it's like two, five minutes, whatever, you can actually end up seeing a big difference. Um, seeing your body change. And um, then that two minutes is like, oh, well, two minutes is actually not that bad. I'm going to go five. Okay, mm -hmm. well, you know, five minutes is not that bad. Maybe I'm just going to do 10 minutes. And then all of a sudden you're doing half hour and it's like, oh, I'm actually sweating. Maybe I should go take a shower. Um, and you feel better about yourself and you'll see the difference. You'll mm -hmm. see the changes. Um, and it doesn't have to be hard. Like, it's not hard to start with, you know, picking three exercises and you do your dishes and then you step away from the sink and you do, you know, 15 squats and you go back to doing some more dishes. It's it's, it's kind of easy. When you put it that way, you make it sound so easy. <laughs> yeah, but like that's all it has to be, right? Yeah. It's like you're basically giving yourself a gateway drug to exercise, right? And it's like the gateway is feeling better about yourself. And like every time, say your legs do hurt, every time you do it, you go, yeah, I exercise. And that's why I'm sore. And then the next time, you know, you go, it's not going to hurt as much. Mm -hmm. And your your body will get better and you'll adapt to it and you'll feel better it'll it'll just kind of start and keep going i can definitely attest to that because right now we've got in the transform yeah we've got a seven minute uh plank routine yeah i don't know if you've seen it yeah. it's quite interesting um the first day yesterday was very like challenging yeah today i was like yeah it's actually pretty good i'm enjoying it um so every day we're actually increasing each of the workouts by five seconds. Um, so tomorrow will be, uh, sorry, every other day. So yeah. tomorrow will be at 10 seconds. So then by the end of it, we'll be doing the full seven minutes. Well, and the thing that like that you're saying that I'm hearing, right, is we, right? There's a group of people doing this. Yes. It's not just you. You're no. going to share how you feel about it. You're going to have this interaction with other people that are doing the same thing. And that makes a huge difference, right? That community. I mean, I every Wednesday I meet a bunch of people in Queen Elizabeth Park for a totally free workout, mm -hmm. right? And it's all fitness levels. It doesn't matter who you are. You just show up. We give you a hug or a high five. We start a workout together. And this is a global organization. It's called November Project. But it's about the community. And there are people that the first time they showed up, I'm like, whoa, okay, we'll pay attention to that guy. And now, like, I went away when my twins were born for eight weeks. Mm -hmm. I saw a picture the week before I came back. I'm like, holy crap. This guy is, like, totally transformed. Um, and, yeah, this is somebody that I was legitimately worried that was, like, going to have a heart attack the first time I saw him. And just having that group of people that you mm -hmm. can do this with 
um, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, it, it's huge. Perfect. Um, so we did actually have some questions yeah. from some people earlier, so I'll just quickly ask those. Yeah. Um, are there any foods or drinks that you avoid as part of your training? So really, like I said, as an athlete, like when I was competing, um, going into Olympic trials and uh, leading up to the Olympics, I abstained from coffee, which is insane, right? Like for the amount of coffee that I drink now, it's, it's kind of crazy to think that like I wasn't starting my day with caffeine, but I really wanted to make sure that I was fully hydrated, mm -hmm. that there wasn't anything going into my body that was going to make me pee more. So I would avoid coffee at all costs, caffeine, like I wouldn't have Coke. If I was having pop, it had to be ginger ale or something like that. Um, but otherwise, food-wise, um, I mean, alcohol obviously was, was gone too. But um, otherwise, food-wise, like I, I really ate anything. Like um, except for in 2011 when I had that really strict diet, um, especially when I was in college, like it was not uncommon to do a Little Caesars run at 9 p.m. to mm -hmm. go get a pizza and that thing was gone within 30 minutes of us getting into the house. Um, and usually I'd tag on a whole half, like a whole cake um, on top of that just because we were crazy, right? We just burned so many calories mm -hmm. and we were always active. And like it was, it was probably the time where my body fat was one of the lowest it ever was, um, but it just was going. So here's a question. Yeah. What's your take on pop diet and diet pop? I think this is more a personal kind of realization or whatever, but my current feeling towards that is that if you're going to have a pop by itself, have the Coke, um, because your body is going to be stimulated to produce insulin, um, because there's sweets, um, and there, there's chemicals in there that your body's mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm being simulated. So I'm going to actually go and make this hormone. And, um, when that happens, um, it's going to affect you, right? So it's going to pull more blood sugar out. So you might feel low later on. Um, and if you're going to like, if you are going to have a diet pop, like, because of whatever, um, I'd have it with the meal. With a meal. So, like, ask yourself why you're having the pop in the first place, right? Like, are you having a Diet Coke because you want the caffeine? Or are you having a Diet Coke because you like the taste of, co uh, of Coke, right? Um, but, uh, like, now I don't drink any diet soda at all. Um, I, I'll just go for the regular sugar and it just counts as part of my meal. So why don't you drink any of the Diet Coke? Um... Cause I, I'm not worried. I've gotten over my fear of like the 200 or whatever calories or I guess it's a hundred calories. Everything's kind of seems standardized down to a hundred, but, um, I, I, I've just kind of regulated myself to like, okay, well it's a hundred calories in my diet, um, or that I can either have or not have. And, um, just the chemicals in it. I'm, you know, I don't really know what they're doing. Um, I don't know what aspartame's long-term effects are, um, or sucralose or any of those types of things. Mm -hmm. And, um, I just prefer the flavor, right? Like I, I like having the actual thing and I can tell the difference if it's not, I can, there's a metallic aftertaste that I get in my mouth. Um, and you just don't touch it anymore. And I used to, like I, we used to have Coke zero for me, diet Coke for my wife sitting, you know, in our fridge mm -hmm. all the time when we were training. Um, yeah, and it just, it's no longer part of our lives. Cool. Yeah. Um, so here's another question. What supplements help you most um, as an athlete? So as an athlete, it's it's always totally person specific. I mean, I had my own sponsors, um, several different sponsors as I went along through my career. Um, but there's a, a recovery supplement um, in terms of like, right after your your training is done, getting food into your body, um, it being in liquid phase because it absorbs more easily than having to be digested, all of that stuff came into play. Um, but really it comes down to, um, if you're gonna supplement um, your diet with, um, for like recovery for fuel, um, you wanna target in on, on whatever is, is 
produced for the activity that you're doing. So if you want a low calorie, but um, uh, have the proteins and have whatever you need, you're going to have that right away. Um, and you're just going to search for that because there's a calorie difference with mm -hmm. all of these things. And um, doing your research is really important that way. But in terms of supplements, like uh, for training, um, like if I'm doing a lot of running even now, I USANA has Procosa, right? It's a joint supplement. Um, and when we run, we add 40 times our body weight into our knees. So I'm going to, if I know I'm doing a, a big block of training, cause I'm going to go do a half marathon or, or whatever, I'm going to take some of that. Um, if I, yeah, like if I know that if I'm going to do anything that involves my joints more, I'm going to take probably more fish oil than I do now. Um, but supplements are, are totally, it, it, it's kind of person specific, um, based off your goals, right? Like even if you and I went and did the same workout, we'd have a different kind of um, what we would need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is your daily regimen with Husana products? Yeah. So I mean, we kind of we kind of went over that, um, but for sure, it's the multivitamin, multimineral, uh, vitamin D, and a fish oil. That's like it's every day, no questions asked. Um, after that, it's um, based off of um, what I'm doing. If I'm coming into cold and flu season, I'm gonna take uh, proglucamine to because I'm in a I, I fist bump 200 kids every two days, mm -hmm. right? As they're leaving my class, and we're spreading germs like there's no tomorrow. Um, and so being around that, right? I want my immune system to be higher um, or like we're ready for that um, for that assault or attack, and then. Um, yeah, Procosa for if you're if I'm running, um, if I have any kind of injury, um, not that it's it's for that, um, but proflavanol is um, what I'll use to help with blood flow, right? I mean that's what it is for. It's for you know helping make sure your blood vessels are are, mm -hmm. are good. But if I rolled my ankle, I'll take extra some of that, and it'll help the blood flow through my body, which is what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Perfect. Um... That's pretty much it. Cool. Well, thank you so much. It thank was a you. pleasure meeting yeah. you. Yeah, it's great. Um, Bye, Internet. Hi, Rabia. I don't know who else is here. Uh, nope, that's it. All right. Thanks, guys.